The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the physiology of CPR using the Rescue Man demonstrator device. First, we'll talk about how CPR is performed with a pair of hands. Then we'll talk about how the rescue pod can be used to double the blood flow to the heart and the brain during CPR. Then we'll talk briefly about three common mistakes that can be made during the performance of CPR that we have to be careful to avoid when performing CPR. The Rescue Man demonstrator is shown here. When the chest wall recoils after each compression, a little bit of blood is returned to the heart and a little bit of air flows into the lungs. This is not a very efficient process. Standard CPR, as shown with this demonstration, provides only 10 to 20 percent of the blood flow to the heart and 20 to 30 percent of blood flow to the brain. However, standard CPR can be activated by the use of the rescue pod or impedance threshold device. This device can be placed on a face mask or in this demonstration on the endotracheal tube. Now when you compress the chest and allow the chest to recoil, the vacuum that develops inside the thorax is greater. This results in a doubling of blood flow back to the heart and as a result a doubling of blood flow to the brain. The pressures within the brain actually become lower faster when using the rescue pod so there's less resistance to blood flow to the brain. Now that you've seen how the rescue pod can be used to activate standard CPR, let's talk about three common errors that are often made during the performance of standard CPR. The first has to do with hyperventilation or excessively ventilating a patient. If you excessively ventilate a patient so the pressure within inside the thorax is always elevated, then there's no time for blood to return to the heart because the pressures work against you. Let me demonstrate this. By connecting an AMBU bag to the endotracheal tube fitting and squeezing gently, you can see what happens each time a breath is delivered. The heart actually shrivels up as the lungs are inflated. That is, as the pressure inside the thorax goes up, the cavities of the heart are decreased in size because of the external pressure. Venous return is markedly reduced. As a result, CPR is very inefficient it's important to ventilate only 10 times a minute when performing continuous chest compressions and to use a 30 to 2 chest compression to ventilation ratio during BLS CPR. The second mistake that is commonly made is that people forget that they need to allow the chest to fully recoil. When you push down on the chest, you need to make sure your palm comes off the chest to allow that small vacuum to develop inside the thorax. If you're tired and just lean on the chest, there's no time for the chest to recoil, there's no time for the little vacuum to develop, and there's no time to have venous blood flow back to the heart. So you have to allow the chest to fully recoil. The third common mistake is not having a tight seal on the face mask when using the rescue pod during BLS CPR. This can be demonstrated by putting a small hole in the rescue pod, which creates a leak similar to the leak which you would have if you don't have a continuous seal around the face mask and the face when performing BLS CPR. Let's review first what happens with an intact seal. The seal is good and we have excellent chest wall recoil and we have excellent filling of the heart. Now if I use a rescue pod with a hole in it to simulate a leak and I perform CPR, we get much less of an effect. Thus, it is critical to have a tight face mask seal during the compression and decompression phases, continuously during the CPR. To summarize, the Rescue Man demonstrator shows the physiology of CPR. Pushing down on the chest increases the pressure inside the thorax and squeezes the heart. Blood flows out of the heart to the brain and the rest of the body. When you let the chest wall recoil, blood flows back into the heart and air flows into the lungs. This system can be optimized by the rescue pod. The rescue pod prevents air from rushing into the lungs during the recoil phase of CPR, thereby activating the thorax and doubling blood flow back to the heart and to the brain. Excessive ventilation with mouth-to-mouth -mouth or a resuscitator bag actually inhibits blood flow back to the heart, and you can see the heart shrivel up with each compression. It's important to allow the chest to fully recoil each time or you won't optimize the benefits of CPR. And finally, remember, 
avoid leaks around the face mask to optimize the benefits of the impedance threshold device. If you're going to use the rest command demonstrator to show others how CPR works, remember to follow the instructions on the back. It's important to prime this device before using it, and the instructions are pretty clear-cut. Thank you.